Hello. Silent here. Um, and this is Silent Junior, if you're curious, right? He's growing up to be an astronomer. Anyway, um, today's video is going to be, if I can get this camera right, hello. Today's video is going to be um, a second part on Claire Audience. Um, so I know last week I talked about Claire Sentience and how Tesla believed that everything came down to energy, frequency, and vibration, right? Uh, energy, which Einstein theorized is equivalent to matter, and then frequency, which would be like ham radios, and then uh, vibration, which would be like molecules vibrating slower or faster depending on the thickness or variety of said molecules, give or take, some more specific and scientific words included or excluded, right? So basically, I'm going to kind of touch back on that, just, just that little bit right there. And then what I really want to talk about is when it comes to Claire audience, everything comes down to frequency, right? Like I said, uh, our brains are like ham radios. And when the antennas are pointed a specific way or when we're born with specific gifts, talents, or scientifically speaking, hereditary traits that are imbued into our DNA, right? Like I talked about in the original Claire audience or Claire videos and how back in the day, um, kings and queens would marry within the family to keep the lineage strong. But way, way, way back, they did also to keep um, specific powers also within the family. So, keeping in mind, it's a cute little pine cone. It's a baby pine cone. See it? It's adorable. Anyway, so, um, ham radios, right? So when certain things are lined up hereditarily or you were gifted specific abilities in life, what happens is you pick up on certain frequencies and some are, there's different kinds of frequencies or different types of uh, clear audience, right? So there's two, there's internal and external, right? And people who are schizophrenic, they hear the external frequencies of, of um, vibrations or voices, right? Or they will see auditory hallucinations, right? Which would be for a different video. But basically, they're just picking up on um, mainly malevolent or angry or suffering spirits that are still tethered to the material world, right? And what happens is, is that they attach themselves to your energy field, like I had said in a previ previous another video called spirit attachments and how they can do that right so they attach to the field and they absorb the energy they make them or I, I guess I shouldn't say make them they influence them to have um, more and more symptoms to elicit a specific response which elicits emotions which means they can feed off of that energy right and this ability is is unique in its own right. They all are, right? But the cool thing about clairaudience is it's also in line with telepathy. Telepathy is the... There's a dog, like, right across the fence. Sorry. Telepathy is the ability to hear other people's thoughts. Now, people, once again, or I guess for the first time in this video, I'm not a healthcare professional. I'm just speaking from my experience. But a tendency from a lot of people who are experiencing psychosis or a break from reality will tend to have this idea or delusion that they can hear other people's thoughts, right? But that's not actually happening and that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is clear, um, how do I say this? A clear vibration of another person's thoughts, right? And your, free, your antennas are picking up on their thoughts 
right? They're pointed in that direction to where your friend is. And you guys are so close, you share an emotional bond, which tends to happen with people who spend a lot of time together, correct? And you're picking up on their thoughts. Now it's not most of the time. It's not something that's continuous or you're always hearing, you know, your best friend's thoughts or dare I say a twin. Some people would disagree if they have twins, which is fine. Like none of this is absolutes. I don't believe there's any absolutes in the world. And, you know, there's an exception to every rule. And just beyond that, what I'm talking about is in the old, the books of old where people used to have real telepathy, where they could take their antenna, theoretically speaking, and point it at someone they're trying to hear the thoughts of, right? And they would pick up on the vibrations of the thought forms that they're having in their mind, and they would pull them into theirs, right? I mean, there's different ways you can go about this, energetically combining two different abilities or powers like clairsentience and clairaudience. You could create a tether between the two of you, and then that would create a connection, which would make it easier for you to hear their thoughts, right? It also depends on uh, your ability itself and how honed it is, I suppose, or how how, um, good at using it that you are, is what I'm trying to say. So it does come down to that. So you you can't just be born with clairsentience and then just be automatically good at it, right? And even if your gift is clairsentience, you still have the free will and choice to pursue clairvoyance. Although you may have to start from scratch or farther behind from the other, it's still something that a lot of people decide to work on right and free choice because we're multi-dimensional meaning that there's parallel universes for infinite amounts and versions of ourselves that have made different choices through the multiverse correct so and that's the only reason why bad things happen is because people have free will although i believe that karma despite the the choices that other people make still has an influence on the karmic baggage that we still have to deal with that we haven't done with in past lives, which is why reoccurring problems in certain relationships or certain situations keep coming up because we have to deal with them, but we also have the choice to suppress them, which is why they keep showing up, right? So that's free will. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. So we're talking about telepathy, right? And how we can um, tune into other people's thought forms or their uh, part of their mental space, correct? And then there's other things, right? There's uh, people that can tune into the energy of plants and hear the thoughts or feel the energies of plants like the tree behind me or this little plant in front of me that I'm touching right and science has been excuse me science has shown that plants actually do have thoughts right and that they can communicate with each other through root systems grass creates a pheromone when you lay on it that makes you itchy because it's crying out get off of me it's its defense mechanism right plants are not of sentient proportion but they do have a level of intelligence Right, and we can communicate to plants. We can communicate via energy and thought mixed together and tell them that we love them and they love that, right? And that's another way that clear audience is very effective and when it comes to the natural world. And there's different variations of plants and life forms that have just basic life needs that can still that you can still tune into their frequency, right? Um, and now another cool one. And this gift, uh, King Solomon was said to have this this kind of gift based upon the ring that he, he wore uh, and that was created for him. Now, King Solomon was a very intense uh, magic user, right? Or a magician or mage, a sorcerer at the time. 
and he created a, a, a symbol and just a little background he I don't want to say he conquered but he used the demons from and except for Lucifer of I want to say the underworld we'll just say the underworld for lack of better perspective right now and he used them to bring him riches and conquer lands and stuff like that so he used the magic at his disposal and he was able to tie them to do his bidding based upon certain um, Solomon which some people still use now the Solomon seals right or the seals of Solomon and they have different planetary aspects and attributes that make them very relevant uh, anyway he had created a, a ring with a sigil on it that allowed him to telepathically speak to animals. And this is something that has been talked about for hundreds of years, right? And even people who put on the ring, I don't know personally, so I can't really say. I don't believe that they perhaps had the, uh, the stats, right? The high enough stats or... Uh, spiritual gifts or spiritual abilities honed enough to actually be able to use the ring properly even though it is in government control and I have never met anybody who's even remotely tried to use the ring in front of me right but that would be my guess as if to why it wouldn't work but we can tune into the uh, vibration and frequencies of animals and he's not the only person who has been said to have this ability to speak to animals uh, throughout history He's, I think he's one of the first to actually force it instead of it being a natural gift, right? Which is still very interesting. So once again, um, animals speak in a different language. So how does that relate and how, we, how can we talk to animals, right? Now, I've never spoken to an animal telepathically, but I would have to guess, and we make an educated guess, is that our energies are similar enough to where the energy that they send to us, to our energy, right? becomes interpreted by our energy field and if we have the gift the ham radio can pick up on that right the brain can pick up on that and then translate it or perhaps they're around us enough to know how to talk to us which wouldn't make sense for wild animals i would think the interpretation of their vibrational frequencies to ours is what would make us be able to like understand what it is that they're saying other than that Perhaps if you're clairvoyant instead of clairaudient, perhaps they can speak to you in images, right? So it's all about how we interpret the energy. Right. Sorry, there's a butterfly. I'm very distracted today, uh, so you have to excuse me, and I apologize. Um, let's see. What did I talk about? Humans, plants, and animals. There's a multitude of ways, and I just keep thinking of more and more of information about these gifts and how they can be used and how you can um, develop them. And maybe I'll do another video about how to develop this specific skill or gift or to know if you have it and it needs to be worked on, right? So, I believe that's it. Yeah. I believe that's it for today. So, if you like this video or you found the information important or helpful in any way, right, it would be very helpful to me if you could smash that like button and subscribe to my channel. Um, I'm working on getting better equipment because I'm going off of my phone right now, but you got to start somewhere, right? It's better to make progress than to miss a day. So, unfortunately, this is the best that I can do for the moment. But there are better things to come, and I promise you, they will be here. Just not today. Alright, have a great day.